So it has literally been 10 years since I've had this guitar in any kind of studio-like environment. I got a really cool story to share with you guys today. What is up everybody, I'm Anthony Espadasa and thank you so much for coming back to my YouTube channel to hang out with me, hang out with your boy just for a little bit. I really appreciate it as always. Today I have a, a really cool little story for you guys. But before we get into the story, I just wanna quickly remind you guys, if you guys enjoy my content or if you're enjoying this video, make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell as well, smash that shit so you can notify it every time I drop a new video. I drop new videos here on my YouTube channel every Thursday. I kind of variate between, uh, you know, plug-in videos, guitar reviews, uh, cover songs, this is a guitar oriented channel and as I move forward I'm experimenting a little bit more with different aspects of guitar oriented videos if you want to join me on that journey go ahead and subscribe all right so with those plugs out of the way I kind of want to get a little bit into the story of this guitar how I got my hands on this guitar in the first place how much this guitar means to me talk about what happened of course you guys probably read the title of this video I'm gonna get into all those details in just a second but for this video I really really wanted to do something special so I went ahead and I wrote and recorded one track Track just specifically for this video using this guitar for the very first time in over 10 years in some kind of studio recording like environment this is the first time this guitar has seen record in over 10 years and while listening to the song you guys might also wonder hmm this sounds a little dated well I really wanted to go back to the style that I was playing at the time of owning this guitar at the time I purchased this guitar and kind of experiment to see if I still got it you know that all that metal core melodic stuff so if you're my age if you're in your early 30s late 20s you're probably gonna enjoy this track and then after the video I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna share my story with you guys all right let's go ahead and let's jump into the track So for those of you guys that don't know what I'm talking about, I am talking about my Dean Razorback. This is uh, one of the first Dean Razorback models that they released. I believe it was back in 2007. Um, and I kind of wanted to go into this story, talk about how I got this guitar and talk about what it means to me and talk about what happened and how I got it back. So we have to start at the very beginning and unfortunately this story starts with um, an ex of mine, which I'm not exactly enthusiastic about sharing, but because it does have some form of context within this story, I figure, you know what, fuck it. I might as well take a trip down memory lane. So we have to rewind back to 2007. Your boy was not showering that much. I was, uh, I believe I was 18 years old at the time, uh, playing in not that great of a band with some really awesome people I just want to put out there. And I got married to basically who was my high school sweetheart. We were on and off throughout high school, I had a very chaotic relationship, and you know, as teenagers do, we thought it was best that to better stabilize our relationship, it would be awesome to get married. So a couple months after graduating high school, my ex got pregnant, and I was through the roof excited, I was really, really excited to be a dad. Unfortunately, we did lose the baby. Man, I tell you, when I got the news that we had lost the baby, I 
broke down and it hit me hard man i really wanted to be a dad and you know then a couple months later we decided to get married and you know got divorced about nine months from that but anyways it was sometime after we lost the baby that i realized i needed to play music i had quit my high school band to be with her and to pursue that relationship and after we lost the baby she realized too that i needed to play music i'm a musician i'm a songwriter it's something it's in my dna i need to do that so i hit up my buddy brandon brandon who's my drummer in defy the tyrants now but at the time brandon was playing for a band called drain i hit up my boy brandon and asked him if he knew any bands in the area that um was auditioning guitar players and he told me about this band called burdens arise and i was so so excited i messaged that band and gave him like this big ass resume on what i can do uh, physically on the guitar and my experience in playing music and all that stuff and then they responded back really really quick and i had an audition about a week and a half from that message this is back in the myspace days by the way people so i know I'm, I'm getting old there was one problem one problem one really big problem i didn't own a guitar <laughs> i had actually given my guitar away uh to a close friend of mine and unfortunately he had moved out of san diego so i didn't have a guitar and i didn't want to show up to this practice being like yeah hey guys can i borrow a guitar to practice you know and all that stuff and just kind of some really lame shit. so i talked with my wife at the time and we kind of gather that we have been through a lot during that year and i just kind of told her how much i really needed this especially after losing the baby i really needed to kind of get my head straight and get my head together so it was the day before i had the audition we drove to guitar center down here in san diego and I, the minute i walked into guitar center there it was the dime razor bag my dean right there in the corner looking glorious pearly white with the awesome headstock great body Ooh gorgeous gorgeous guitar so we bought the guitar for 450 flat uh, bought a case with it as well and I put new strings on it got it all set up I was super 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 excited that night I told her how thankful I was because at the time I was pretty broke I was kind of working a not a great job and you know uh, she bought it with her her school money and I wanted to show her how much I appreciated it so I went ahead and I told her you know what I'm gonna name the guitar after what would have been what we perceived would have been our daughter while she was pregnant we talked about what name we were going to name our son or daughter and persephone is what we would have named our daughter and i kind of felt it in my heart uh that we were gonna have a daughter we were gonna have a little girl so i went ahead and i named my guitar persephone uh in remembrance of what i perceived would have would have been my daughter so that night i went ahead and i inscribed uh, the letter p right here on the back of the headstock i know a lot of people will probably get on me for that but i had no plans of reselling this guitar i had no plans of doing any of that this was my guitar and i wanted to commemorate that memory with uh an insignia so i went ahead I, you guys i don't know if you guys can see it too well on the camera but i put the letter p right back here so the next day i went to the audition got the gig and that's how i got into burdens arise and started playing professionally as a musician and i used it for every show from 2008 to about 2012. I, it was at every show that I played. I used it in the studio for everything. I even wrote one of the songs that means the world to me, one of uh, what I consider is my best song, which is a song called The Bat in the Moon, which I wrote when my girlfriend, um, about a, many years later, not many years later, five years later, got pregnant with my son. Uh, I wrote the song The Bat in the Moon about my son and I wrote it on this guitar. You know, fast forward a couple years, my son's born and he gets a little older and I always play guitar around my son. I always want to um, introduce music to him and introduce guitar and stuff like that to him. So one day I have my Dean Razorback kind of hanging out right on the, on the wall of my apartment and he rolls up to it and he starts, you know, he starts doing this to it and I, was smiling, I was so proud, I was so happy. He's taking an interest in guitar, and I believe at the time he was like uh, two years old. And he goes ahead and he hits it so hard that the guitar falls on the floor and gets a crack right here. I don't know if you guys can see it well, but there's this uh, big crack right here. After about 20 seconds of fuming out of the ears, I realized that I had already damaged the guitar because I had inscribed what would have been my daughter's uh, name on the back of the headstock. So really, the crack really didn't do too much over the years i purchased new guitars and eventually i did retire this guitar in 2012 i started using uh, an esp ltd live and then it was pretty much i retired it and i said you know what i'm gonna give this guitar to my son when he turns 13 years old if he wants to play guitar and that was a plan that was a plan i kind of put it back in its case and it sat in my apartment and every now and then i would bust it out and play a little bit but really i didn't do too much with it after that fast forward to 2016 my 
my wife and I, we were in a really, really tough spot financially and we had to make a decision regarding our living situation and we decided that it would be best to move on from our living space at the time and move in with, uh, with my girl's cousin for a couple months until we could figure out exactly what we were gonna do and we could save money and obviously move out and stuff. So we moved in with my girl's cousin and the guitar stayed in her garage for about uh, three, four months while we were there, saving up and getting ready to go to the next phase of our lives. Sometime later, me and my girl, we get ready to move into a bigger space. And I say, you know what, let's go ahead, let's go pick up that guitar. So she hits up her cousin and her cousin goes to look for the guitar, find out the guitar has gone missing. I was so broken and I, tr I wanted to be mad at her cousin, but again, it was my fault. It was something I should have never left inside this garage. I should have brought it with me. I should have made do, but it was, it was my responsibility. And I figure her dad, and I figure my girl's cousin's dad, who was a salvage repairman, kind of whatever, I don't know what you would call that kind of uh, employment, but basically uh, salvages things. I think maybe he thought that the guitar in the garage was, you know, he could he could get a pretty penny for it or something like that. A lot of people who don't own guitars or don't know anything about guitars think that this guitar is a luxury guitar, which is it's not that luxurious. Anyways, so I go on for the next four. So I go on for about the next four and a half years, moving on to defy the tyrants and rocking the stage with my new seven string guitars and killing it and having a good old time. Now at the beginning of the summer of 2021, which is when this video is being shot, by the way, my girl was wrapping up her college education. She was actually getting ready to graduate. So she was studying for her finals. And, uh, basically she would go to the kitchen, sit down the kitchen, study her finals. And I would go to bed, uh, and, or I would watch TV or whatever. So I remember one night I was kind of hanging out in my room. I was on my phone on Instagram or something and she messages me from the kitchen she says hey is this your guitar and sends me a photo of a guy that we knew from the time we were living at my girl's cousin's uh, house at, during that time period he was holding my Dean Razorback and he was playing it in a live Facebook video the first thing I thought is I'm gonna fucking kill this dude that's my fucking guitar and this is where we go into the whole my guitar wasn't misplaced my guitar was stolen so i see this picture and i decided you know what i'm gonna message him right away so that's what i did i messaged him right away hey man where did you get that guitar he proceeds to block me i'm pacing back and forth i'm fuming out of the ears i'm getting ready to kill shit and my girl tells me you need to calm down you need to relax a little bit and i tell her well what the fuck and she tells me he doesn't live in San Diego. He lives in Arizona. And I'm thinking, oh my God, my guitar's in Arizona. What the hell, dude? And as I'm looking at this picture, I'm seeing like, <laughs> I'm seeing blue strings on the guitar and I'm like, oh, that's so cringy. And I see like skull tone knobs on them. He replaced my tone knobs with skull knobs. Oh my God, it's so bad. So my girl said, hold up, I have an idea. And she tells me, why don't you pay for the guitar? And I said, well, let me talk to him first. Let me see what's up. So she hits him up and she basically tells him, hey, Anthony's willing to pay for the guitar. He's not mad at you. He doesn't want to hurt you or anything. When I tell you within 30 seconds, my phone was ringing. So I pick up the phone and I'm kind of gritting my teeth a little bit. Hey man, what's, what's up? And mind you, I had gone outside to my front yard and I put them on speakerphone and I had my girl and my little brother there as well and to have them as witnesses during this conversation. He was helping my girl's cousin clean her garage, saw my guitar right there in the garage and he had asked her if he could have the guitar and she said yes. I got up, I was running, oh, oh my God, dude, I was so fucking pissed. So I'm on the phone with him and I tell him, you know what, man, uh, I would like to buy the guitar back. And he tells me, okay, well, I did make some modifications to the guitar. I had to clean it up. I had to fix some of the wiring. So I told him, you know what, tell you what, I will go ahead and I will trade you one of my seven string guitars. Actually, it was gonna be this guitar. I was gonna trade him for my Dean back. He agreed to it, got super excited. He said, I've never tried a, a seven string before. I've never, I've never done anything like that. And tells me, oh, I'm gonna bring down my guitar pedals. I wanna show you some songs. We can go in your studio. I can, and he's like, all right, man, I will be there in a month and a half. Cause I guess he was coming down in a month and a half for my girl's cousin's birthday. He did mention that he didn't want my girl's cousin to know anything about it. And that's something that we all thought was 
really weird. He didn't want her to know what was going on. Why can't we just tell my girl's cousin, hey, you accidentally gave Tony's guitar away. Why is that such a big deal? So I had to prep for a month. I had to figure out exactly how I was gonna do this, how we we're gonna make it happen. As the weeks went on, he would just text me out of nowhere. Hey bro, how's it going? Hey man. He thought that we were friends and I had to play the part. A lot of people might see that that's a really flawed characteristic. That's a really immature way of handling this kind of situation. But at the end of the day, this guy, it's not like this guy lived down the street. This guy lived, was staying about six to eight hours away from where I lived. And aside from this one window opportunity, there was no other way I can get this guitar back. So I had to really weigh out the lesser evils on this one and I had to play the part. So you fast forward about a month and a half, the day before we were supposed to meet up, I told him, hey, you know, let's go ahead and let's meet up at my studio because I didn't want him to know where I live, first of all. So I said, let's go ahead, let's meet up at my studio. We'll plug the guitar in, we'll check it out. I'll show you the seven string, blah, 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 blah. All right, bro, I'm really looking forward to it. The good thing is, is that the day that we were supposed to meet up, I also had to find the Tyrant's band practice. So I had scheduled it to happen about an hour before we were supposed to practice and uh luckily my boy brandon was here i actually talked to him the night before and he said he would come down early just so that he could be kind of uh, a little bit of a muscle a little bit of a witness to make sure this fool doesn't try anything stupid with me so i'm in here in the studio with brandon we're just waiting for him to show up and then he texts us right on the dot hey man i'm outside i walk out of the studio and i walk to the lobby and he's literally parked right in front i could see him and what's he doing He's fucking playing my guitar. And he's not a very good guitar player, by the way. But he's just into it. He's in the moment, which is fine, whatever. And man, my blood was boiling. Brandon had actually put his arm on my shoulder and be like, hey man, you need to chill the fuck out. Let's get this guitar. We go outside, we meet with him. So after he had explained what he had done to the guitar, it got quiet for a second. And then I told him, hey man, I need to explain to you what this guitar means to me. After a couple of minutes of explaining, I end it with, this is why I cannot trade you my seven string. You need to understand this is my guitar, this is my property, this was never given to you. And I asked him one more time, how did you get this guitar? He tells me the same story, but he changed it to, he was saying that he was helping to move some stuff around in my girl's cousin's garage, and my girl happened to be there, and he said, oh, Jennifer said I could have it. I looked him in the eye and I said, my girl would never, ever, ever give this guitar away. She knows how much this guitar means to me, and there is no way in hell she would ever, ever, ever give this guitar away. And he proceeds to tell me, yeah, she did. And I told him, I'm not trading my seven string guitar. He knew what was gonna happen. He knew what was up. He knew that he wasn't gonna get no seven string. I sat right here in this chair, plugged in the guitar, and I must've played it for about 15, 20 minutes. And while I was playing it, I felt so, so at home. It had been the first time I had played this guitar in about four years. And I was trying to figure out exactly what I was gonna do with it. Because I'm not playing six string guitars in either my solo music or my band of father tyrants or even here on my youtube channel my youtube channel is dedicated around seven string guitars so i'm over here trying to think exactly what to do with the guitar i said i don't need to do anything with this guitar this is my guitar this is my baby i can play whenever i want though over the next course of the next week i clean it down polished it up made it look really nice uh unfortunately the color now looks a little more vanilla yellow <laughs> than it does uh pearl white but i cleaned it the best i could and the minute that the first time I saw the insignia of what would have been my daughter's name right here on the back. And then I kind of had my hand right here and looked at the crack on this guitar and I started to tear up. This guitar means the world to me. But yeah, guys, so that's the story of my Dean Razorback. You guys are gonna be seeing this, not too much in the future, but every now and then you're gonna see it pop up. You're gonna see me jamming to it. Maybe you might follow me on Instagram or you might see me jamming on it on Instagram live, playing some Pantera or stuff like that. You guys might see it pop up here and there. It's a little Easter egg that I'm gonna be bringing out every now and then. All right guys, so that is how my Dean Razorback was stolen and how I got it back four years later. Let me know if you guys enjoyed this little video. Let me know if you guys enjoy these little story videos as well. I'm kind of, this is like my second story video in a row and I have a bunch of other videos kind of backlogged right now and I'm ready to put out um, where I'm digging into plug and doing shootouts and stuff like that but let me know if you guys like this kind of style for my channel i kind of dig telling little stories here and there and sharing some of these uh important important moments with you guys i will catch you guys on the next video please stay safe wash your ass wash your hands and like always keep it heavy